Hey guys, it's Andrea from the blog Pen and Prospect Home, and today's post is all about encouragement for moms, and especially moms who are feeling very overwhelmed for whatever reason, or moms who feel like they are less than or not good enough. And there's a couple of things I want to talk about, and I also want to share some tips at the end, um, just different things that will help to <laughs> keep your sanity. Um, but I want to address this because I've actually gotten some messages on Instagram in the past few weeks just about my house and my schedule. How do you keep your house so clean with kids? And um, how do you get anything done with kids? I feel like I can't get anything done. And so I just want to talk about this for a second because I think that it is so easy to look at someone on social media and assume that they have their life all together when that really isn't the case. We are just sharing our highlights, just like you share your highlights on social media, and it becomes so easy to fall into the trap of comparison. So um, I'm just especially burdened for moms today because I think about my mom and when she raised us, uh, she grew up in Michigan, and shortly after they were married, they drove 900 miles away and lived in Connecticut where my dad took a job as a youth pastor at a church. And so she was completely isolated. She obviously didn't have texting back then. She, it was expensive to make long distance calls to call her mom all the time. And it was really just, she was really just by herself. And what that did for her, and she tells me this all the time, is it really helped, number one, to strengthen the relationship she had with her husband and not to go run to mom and daddy all the time. But at the same time, uh, she was just sort of in a bubble. And all she knew was that home that they had, the family that they had started, and she was not bombarded daily. I mean, they didn't even have television. <laughs> so they just played like board games Monopoly every night. Um, which is just so funny to me, but um, also really special. And you compare her life as a young mom to the lives of young moms today, and we have this awful little device that we carry around with us 24-7, and we are constantly opening it and clicking on Instagram or Facebook, and we are seeing all the homes of other people, whether it's people that we don't know, that we follow, uh, just because we like their style, and even the people that we do know. And there is this constant uh, battle of comparison. This is probably one of the messages that I get the most on Instagram is, I'm struggling with comparison. I just don't feel like I measure up. I don't feel good enough. I feel like I'll never be as good as her. And it's really just broken my heart over this past year, so much so to the point where I've gotten a little bit emotional about it. Because my goal and my hope and dream for my blog is never, ever, ever to make anyone feel less than or to make anyone feel like they're not as good. But I want to inspire and encourage and uplift and love on other women. I never want anyone to feel less than. And I will never forget a couple years ago, I had developed a close friendship with someone here locally that started coming to our church. And she stopped by my house when I was in the middle of making homemade chicken and dumplings. My countertops were filthy. There was flour everywhere. I had flour all over myself, dirty dishes in the sink. The house was a wreck. The kids were playing with toys and blocks. And she stopped over and my perfectionist, um, type A personality sort of freaked out a little bit. <laughs> And you know what she said when she walked in? She said, oh, it is so encouraging to me to see your house like this. <laughs> and she really stopped me in my tracks. I couldn't believe what she was saying. And here I was about to apologize for my messy house and my messy kitchen. And I realized something that day that people probably see my Instagram account or my blog and think that I have this perfect house with these perfectly organized drawers. And um, it's just not even close to being true. And I'm so glad that that happened that day and I invited her in. She sat down and I finished making the soup. She actually had some chicken and dumplings that night and we just chatted for a couple of hours and it was so nice. And 
part of me was kind of twitching a little bit, you know, as I looked around the house, but at the same time, it taught me a huge lesson. But let me address a few of these questions I've been getting because, uh, like I said, I had one message come in um, that said, how in the world do you get so much done with kids? And let me just say that there are different seasons, first of all, this is my first point, there are different seasons to motherhood. It is, motherhood is constantly evolving. It's constantly changing. One year will never, ever, ever be the same as the year before, which really makes it beautiful. And it really, what it allows you to do is grow, to reflect, to change. But I think it's easy for young moms especially, and when I say young moms, I guess I mean moms with little, maybe like their first, they have one child or maybe even two, to feel so overwhelmed and look at moms with four or five or six kids and think, how in the world do they get so much done? I can't even get anything done with just one baby. And let me just say, it's a different season of motherhood. I remember when I had just one baby <laughs> and I was this go-getter, schedule maker, um, just, I wasn't one to really be lazy, lay around. Uh, I was constantly doing, constantly painting something, doing projects. And when I had my firstborn, Ethan, it changed my world. It was hard for me. So let me encourage you, mama, if you have one or two and you just feel like, uh, it's never going to get easier. I promise it does. And I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's just because you have an expectation, you know. Um, like for example, with Ethan, I remember thinking, I'm never gonna sleep again. I'm never going to sleep through the night again, never. Like, <laughs> But then when you have that second, you think, okay, this is, this is a short time in their life. It's a short season this too shall pass. It's not going to last forever. And with each child, you just sort of gain more experience. Um, and that's not to say I don't feel overwhelmed at times. I feel extremely overwhelmed at times. Um, I have days where I break down and I think, ah, I'm never gonna get anything done. But um, it's just, it's a different season. And I don't know how else to explain it. And I'm sure other moms can attest to this. Maybe just having older kids as well, uh, it's crazy how much they help out and they obviously become less dependent on you the older they get. So when you see a mom with four or five or six kids and you've got one or two and you feel overwhelmed, remember those older kids are not as dependent on mom as those young babies are. And I would just encourage you to, to not rush through that time, to soak in those precious moments. I'm gonna get emotional again. <laughs> But when I look at my seven-year-old and my five-year-old, I feel like it was just yesterday that they were so little and in my arms. And it, it makes me sad sometimes to think that I was so frustrated when they were babies all the time. I was so frustrated that, oh, they just want to be held all the time and I can't get anything done. Looking back now, I wish I had just let the laundry pile up and held the, that sweet little baby and just not cared so much about getting all the things done. And listen, I believe that as a homemaker, it's our job to <laughs> keep things clean, to keep things in order. I guess what I'm saying though is try not to compare your life with just one or two to that mom with four or five or six. Different seasons of motherhood, they just are. The second thing I wanna say is just don't ever compare your life to another mom's. They will never be the same. There are so many things that can affect our lives and and babies even can be different. I, I had babies that were very colicky. They cried a lot and <laughs> and you shouldn't, you know, compare your life to the life of another mom because what if her babies are, you know, aren't colicky at all? They can swing all day and they don't ever have to be held. You just, you shouldn't compare. Don't ever compare. The Bible tells us that comparing ourselves to others is not wise. And you don't know if that other mom on social media has more help. I remember once when I was comparing myself as a young blogger to another blogger that was about my age and I just felt like, how is she getting so much done? Well, I reached out to her and come to find out she had a babysitter coming two days a week. 
And that just opened my eyes to the fact that sometimes we are quick to compare when we don't even know the whole situation. So I would just encourage you, just don't do it. Don't compare your life to someone else. You have no idea what they're involved in, um, extra activities compared to what you're involved in. Um, so there's just so many things to consider. And I just, I wanna encourage you. I know it's easy to say, don't compare, but really it's so important. And if it means that you need to delete some apps off of your phone, then you need to do it. Um, it's so much more important to get rid of that and, and have a content and, and happy home than to constantly be feeling like, I don't measure up to fill in the blank. So there's different seasons of motherhood, don't compare. And the next thing I wanna say, which I briefly touched on, is that m my life, <laughs> and I know you guys know this, my life, and everyone else's life that you see on social media is not perfect, no matter how hard we may try to pretend like it's perfect, it is not perfect. We have issues, we have marital issues, we have parenting issues, we have um, our own issues. No one is perfect. No one's lives are perfect. We all have struggles, we all have issues, and it's just important to remind yourself of that daily. With that being said, do I think we can learn from people who have been down the road a little bit further? Absolutely. And so I just thought I would end this video with some encouragement because you probably already knew most of what I have said. I hope it was a good reminder. I think we all know it, but it's just, it's good to remind ourselves, isn't it? It's good to hear it. But here are some tips really quick, just to help you that have helped me. Um, as a mother of three boys who are very active, <laughs> crazy. If you watch my Instagram stories, there's constantly screaming in the background. <laughs> um, I do these videos, by the way, during a time in our day called quiet time <laughs> because mommy needs that for her sanity. And I'll get to that in a minute, but uh, I, I get a lot of messages. How do you keep your home so tidy? If you guys could truly see my home right now, it is not perfectly tidy. I still have Christmas decorations up that I haven't tackled yet. Um, but here are some things that just help to keep me because I know that I function better when the house is in order. When everything starts to get out of control, I, my mind starts to get out of control a little bit. And so maybe you're not like that and that's okay. But since I have that question so often, I thought I would just say, I like to focus on the main rooms in our house. So my domain, so to speak, my kitchen, where I spend a lot of my day, dining room, living room, okay? My bedroom can kind of be included in that. Um, if I can keep those areas somewhat picked up and tidy, then I can function pretty well with kids' bedrooms that look like a bomb went off. And what happens is every day before bedtime, we walk around the house, we pick up toys, and sometimes it's nice to have an area, even in your living room for toys, have like a, a, a toy chest or a trunk, or in our case, we have an ottoman that opens up and it's perfect. It's just filled with toys. And I'll open that ottoman, throw a bunch of toys in there. Of course, I have the boys help. It's their job to pick up their mess. Um, if things go in the room, throw them in the room, but just keep those areas tidy and that helps me so much to be able to sit down at night and just breathe. Clean kitchen, clean dining room, clean living room. And uh, that really helps me. And then every once in a while, I'll go into those boys' bedrooms and I'll say, we need to clean in here. Because let's be honest, if I were to spend time cleaning those rooms perfectly every day, I just, I feel like it would be a waste. I mean, the toys are meant to be played with. They constantly have Legos out. And I would be spending hours if I cleaned their rooms daily. And obviously I have them clean their room, but you know what it's like when little kids clean their room. <laughs> they, they do their best, they really do. Um, sometimes everything just gets crammed to the, to the corners and to the sides and it's clean mom, come see it's clean. And that, that'll do. I have changed so much as I've gotten um, older and had more children, I used to be such a perfectionist with every Lego has to go in the perfect, you know, bin that matches that color and style and 
shape and it was just like okay life is too short for that we just need to be content with the bare minimum well my kids are little you know I might require more of them as they grow older but they're so little right now I don't want them to remember mommy always screaming and 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 freaking out over every single little thing so that's what I do I'll let their rooms just kind of be boys bedrooms and then every couple of weeks it's like, okay, it's time for a deep cleaning. I go in there with them and they help. I don't do it on my own. They help. We tackle every single area. And oftentimes it's a good, uh, it's a good way to just declutter. I'm constantly decluttering, getting rid of stuff. Okay, you guys haven't played with this in two months. Let's get rid of it. The next thing that I think really helps me is just developing a rhythm as a mom. If you have a, if you have a rhythm to your day, kids really thrive with a rhythm. When they know what to expect, when they know what's coming next, it just makes your job easier. But if you have some days where you're staying up till one, two in the morning, binging shows, and you sleep in the next day, and your kids are jumping in bed waking you up, and you're angry because you haven't had your coffee, and you know, it's like, some to some extent, we need to be disciplined and have a good example for our children and have a rhythm to our day. I really try hard to, to rise early. I choose to just get ready every day. I don't think that that's something you have to do. It just makes me feel uh, better about my day when I actually get ready, as in put, put on clothes other than my pajamas, put on some makeup, uh, throw some dry shampoo in my hair. I don't spend a lot of time, but I try to be pretty much ready so that when my kids wake up, mom is ready to go. And I don't have to scream at them because I'm reheating my coffee for the sixth time. I've already had my coffee and I'm ready to devote my day to them. And I think that's something that um, it can be, it can require some discipline. It, it really can. It's easy when your kids are little and sometimes you can just stick a tablet in front of them or put the TV on and you can sit in bed and scroll for hours and hours. But um, honestly, it would be amazing for us to really um, just put our phones away all day long and see how much we could really accomplish because you can accomplish quite a bit. So I really have a rhythm to my day. We have breakfast right around 8 o'clock. Obviously this year I'm a brand new homeschool mom, so that has a lot to do with our day. Um, we have reading time and then we do our math and English and then we'll have a break and blah, blah, blah. You probably don't wanna know my specific schedule, but just develop a rhythm. Every day in the afternoon, we have a time in the day called quiet time. The youngest one, my uh, two-year-old is still taking a nap. He lays down for a nap. My two older ones, they need to stay in their rooms and I have them do their writing and reading because that's not really something they need my help with. And then most of the time they wanna go outside, which is fine by me. But have a rhythm to your day so that your kids know what to expect and it makes your life easier as well. So I've been talking long enough, but I want to end with this. Um, in 2019, I chose a word for the year. I haven't chosen one for this year, actually. Last year, my word was charity. The year before that, my word was rest. And it really changed my heart as a mom, just resting in the Lord and doing the very best that I that I could do, the very best that I knew I could do, but then just leaving everything else in his hands. And I think that, you know, we do have limitations as women. We do have limitations as moms. Um, it's hard when your baby's up all night and you have to get up the next day and take care of the others and you're running on one, two hours of sleep. I have been there. I know what that feels like, but just do your best. Just do your best and God sees that and he's there to meet us halfway. He knows, he sees. Um, he was there in the night when that baby was crying. He knows how tired you are. And it's so amazing to come to the point as a mom to where um, you can just say, this is the best I can do and I'm just gonna leave the rest in his hands. And so it's hard, it's hard to do, but at the same time, it's beautiful because you're willing to admit that you only have so much strength and that you need to draw the rest from him. And so that is what really keeps me going on days when, um, when it's just hard, when life is hard, to be able to rest in him and say, I 
cannot put one foot in front of the other. I need you today, desperately. I need you. I need your strength and power. And um, I have several blog posts about this topic that I will link for you guys. Uh, even some that my mom has written over the past few years as a blogger. She's done some guest posts for me and shared some wonderful wisdom as a more experienced mom. And I'll link those as well. But that's what I'd like to end with. I hope some of these things helped you and I hope some of them encouraged you. And uh, I just want to thank you guys for listening. If you are new here, I'd love for you to hit that subscribe button and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.